Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity again for us to learn at your feet, to learn by your spirit. We yield ourselves to you. We ask, Lord, that you would teach us. Holy Spirit of God, reveal the mind of God, the mind of Christ to us. Reveal the truth concerning the topic that we are looking at today. The end as a sub theme of eternal life. At the end, Lord, we ask that we will be mightily blessed. Our lives will be transformed into that glorious image of the Son of God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you once again and welcome. So our topic today is eternal life, part five. And the subtopic is the end. The focus topic is the end. Uh, let me remind us that we have taken a number of studies in the topic eternal life. And of course, this is all a follow-up to the message the Lord has given us, which we put in a book. There is e-copy, and it is free. The book titled, Who is a Christian? And a number of subjects are covered there, including eternal life. As the end of a Christian, a Christian receives eternal life while in this world and continues to live it to the end. So in eternal life series, we have covered part one, which was introduction and overview of eternal life. Part two, which was enduring to the end. Part three, which was judgments and rewards. Part four, which was the resurrection of the dead. Oh, we were mightily blessed. And we want to round off the eternal life series today with the topic, the end. The end. And of course, while we end the series today, we will continue to dig deeper and deeper into the respective uh, subjects that keeps us to endure and enjoy this eternal life to the end. Praise be the name of the Lord. So we are going to take our text for the study today from Matthew chapter 24. Uh, we will look at verses 3 through 14. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 14. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the scribes came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures till the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. i read verse 14 again, which carries the title of the topic. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Praise the name of the Lord. Our topic is the end. So, and we want to take this topic with key focus on understanding the end of humankind and the world system, 
Number two, the end of this physical world. And number three, the hope of the believers in Christ Jesus. So the objective, therefore, from all this is such that you and I will know that as we have this understanding, we understand things that we see in the world and so that we are not deceived, so that we are not shaken, so that we'll be able to preserve the eternal life that we have received and enjoy the life God has given us while here on earth till we translate this world till we leave this world. Praise the name of the Lord. So from that text that we have read, let me start with this statement, the good old days. I believe many of us have heard that statement several times, the good old days. So yes, despite technological advancement, the past is always referred to as the good old days. Why? Is it not surprising when you think about how much the world has advanced, particularly if you take some countries like our country, Nigeria here, you see some areas that were formerly swamp, very unhabited areas have been transformed. High rising buildings, are now the talk of the town in those areas. I remember the days when it was a luxury to have a telephone in your house in Nigeria and be able to make a call. In fact, in my days in the university, we, ha- we used to queue up on a phone booth to make a call with the coin box, as we used to call it. Oh, but these days, mobile phone is in the hand of everyone. Anyone who wants to own a mobile phone can own a mobile phone. Yet, with all that advancement of technology, everyone will look back and say, the world was better yesterday than today. And they express it with this terminology, the good old days. Yeah, some people may argue that uh, the past wasn't better. Okay, yeah, we can get into that argument. However, I wasn't the one who created this point. But let's look at the context under which people say the good old days. Why they say that is because this world, as we see it, stands condemned by God. So those who have been thinking that they will make the world better are actually doing what we call solving war hunger. You know, when Jesus Christ was about to die, and uh, Mary Magdalene came to pour that oil upon uh, his feet and wiped his feet. And you remember what the, um, one of his disciples said. He said, ah, what a waste. This oil, we would have sold it, this perfume, rather. We would have sold it and used it to feed the hungry. <laughs> but Jesus knew his mind. He knew this was more selfish, goodwill, good work than what he was actually saying. Anyway, but he answered him, he said, the poor you will always have with you. So it is like solving war hunger. I mean, there will always be by reason of this scripture that we will see about the end. So The good old days is because God has condemned the world and the world therefore is moving for the end. The world will continue to be worse. Hear me and hear me clearly. As we continue to advance in technology, advance in uh, our human development, we are going to continually degrade in our service to God, our knowledge of God, and worshiping God. Uh, Because of that, what will happen? As that scripture mentioned, if you start looking at it uh, from verse 6, it says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. It says, see that you are not troubled. Yeah? For all these things must come to pass. It went on. To verse 7, he said, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. Oh, 
Lawlessness and wickedness are on continual increase in the world. Nations are against nations. Oil war of 2019 crashed the price of oil and brought the economy of the world to its knees. Famines in, is in increase. Pestilences is, are in the increase in the world. COVID-19 sent fear and panic throughout the world. And many false prophets have arisen and are deceiving many people today throughout the world. So the good old days is indeed a true concept that reflects the truth of the end. As Jesus Christ prophesied in the Bible, according to Matthew chapter 24, that we have read. So we are truly in the end of time. From that scripture, let's make some key points. From verse 13, we see there that he who endures till the end shall be saved. The end comes, and also that the end comes when the gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. That is verse 14. The end comes when the gospel of the kingdom of God will be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. In verse 36, we've already mentioned the false prophets. It talks about the false prophets. Many have predicted when the end will come, but Jesus taught us that that day and hour no one knows. Not even the angels, but our heavenly father only. So note those who are keen in predicting when the war will end. I think that's all I will say about that. But for you and I, the scripture says that the end will come when the scripture, this gospel of the kingdom of God, will be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. We thank God for technology, social media, and that's why we are here, to make the pathway of eternal life simple and clear. Put it on Facebook, put it on YouTube, put it in print, share it everywhere. I want to encourage you to join in sharing. Don't worry, God will use it to touch whoever he will touch, because the end is tied to when the gospel will be preached to all the worlds for a witness against the nations of the earth. So that nobody will say, ah, I didn't know, I didn't hear. If we look at verses 37 to 39, it also makes us understand that the end will be like in the ancient world during the time of Noah. In that time, people were doing just like they are doing now. You know, I made a statement some time ago. I said, by my observation, it looks like mankind is the least learner of all of God's creation. Because when it comes to the critical matter of life, man seems not to learn. Jesus Christ is the only one I know of who has said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. It's also said in John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26 that we looked at last week. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me, he will not die. And this death is not talking about this physical death. It's talking about the eternal life that God gives to mankind through Jesus Christ. So the end will be like in the ancient world during the time of Noah. At that time, people were caring for themselves just as people are caring, little about God, but all they care is themselves. Today, everybody wants to belong and move along. Church songs and prayers are rendered without the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior. In fact, many people who profess to be Christians 
have forgotten that Jesus Christ said that those who are ashamed of him here on earth, he will be ashamed of them before the angels of his father. He will be ashamed of them. So some will sing songs and they put it and paint it. They will pray prayer, but never to put the name of Jesus. In fact, abbreviation IJN has been developed so that they will avoid calling that holy name in Jesus' name. These are all the signs of the end. Many are chasing fame. Many are chasing popularity and have forgotten that it shall be like the day of Noah. Let us look at how the scripture records it in Genesis chapter 6, verse 13, concerning that day. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is sealed with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. And in verse 14, I continue to say, make yourself an ark of gopher's wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And it continues. As you know, that Noah followed the instruction of God and prepared the ark. The rest of the world at his time were drinking. They were marrying, getting along as if there is no end. That's the same way many are operating today, as if there will be no end. So the scripture in that Matthew portion tells us that it shall be like it was in the day of Noah. In verse 38, uh, 37 and 38 of that Matthew chapter 24, I read it very quickly. He said, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. The important point here is that many people didn't believe Noah, just like many people don't take this end message that we are preaching. In fact, it is a very unpopular message now. In fact, some will scoff you for telling them that the end will come. But remember the three aspects of the end that we said this teaching is about. The end of humankind and the world system. The end of the physical world and the hope of the believers as we continue to examine the scripture. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4, there the Bible says the scoffers will come Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. This is what the scoffers are saying. And many don't believe, just as it were in the days of Noah. Scoffers are asking, when will the end come? That things remain as it were. In 2 Peter chapter 2, 4 to 5, the Bible makes us understand that God did not spare the ancient world. God didn't spare the times of Noah. And so this is a clear lesson for us that the end will come one day. The end of humankind and the world system will come. Let's quickly look at that scripture. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, I read. It says, for if God did not spare the ancient, the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Five, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly. So if God did it before, he can do it again. And he will do it again. So the end of humankind will come. And that comes in two ways to again describe it. As I said before, I said 
many of us who are alive today may not live to see when Jesus will return, as that Luke, uh, Matthew chapter 24 told us, that that day will come the same way it came at the time of Noah. It will come like a thief in the night. So as many as live and die in this world, that is your end in this physical world. So the end comes for humankind in two ways. Those who will die before Jesus comes, will, that is their end in this physical world. And the second is for those who will remain at the time that Jesus will appear. So the end of this physical, of humankind in this physical world will come. And the world system, therefore, goes as this human goes. But as we already established that God has condemned the world, all that the world is moving towards is the end. And that's why the world gets worse daily as the uh, world system even gets more advanced. Wickedness. You are a witness. Every one of us is a witness. If we really take time to look at what is happening in the world today, is the world really getting better? No. While there is advancement, as we see, the sum total of the world in, t in relation to God gets worse. And when mankind is worse off in relation to God, it can only be worse. Praise the name of the Lord. So the end of the physical world as well will come, as we just talked about. And we see that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 14. And you also have 2 Peter chapter 3, 6 to 7. So I think I would like to read for consistency's sake from uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, 6 to 7 first. And then I will go to 2 Peter chapter 3, 10 to 14. And I will make a couple of points. And then we will wrap it up. So 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 6 to 7. It says, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now you see here that the world, God is preserved by the word, the word of God. God created the world by his word. As the Bible records, in the book of Genesis. So the physical world will melt with fervent heat. And we see that in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 14. Uh, let me read that for us. Verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, 11, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? I pause there in verse 11. What manner of man ought you, ought me, ought us, ought I, ought we to be in godliness? and holiness. So the physical world will also come to an end. It will melt with fervent heat. When God created the world, I want to make this point, because some scoffers will say again, since the world was created, everything continues. Since they have been hearing this end will come, it has never come. Like I told us, the day we breathe our last breath here, our end has come. So we live with the end in mind. We live with the end actually all the time, not just in mind. We live with the end all the time. Uh, you have been hearing about terrible stories that have happened. Uh, children the other day who were just leaving for school and they, they, had, they were not sick. They had great hope. Unfortunately, sadly, 
accident occurred on the way and they were all gone. We live with the end every day. So let me make this statement. For those coffers and those who are still in doubt, when will the end come? That when God created the world, you didn't contribute to it. So it doesn't matter your opinion. He will destroy it according to his plan without your inputs. You may call that quotable quote, but I believe there is wisdom there for us to start paying attention. I have discovered that those who think on the next level often prepare themselves better to meet that next level. And so that's why it is important for us to have understanding of this subject of the end. So we continue that scripture in 2 Peter chapter 3 to look at the hope of the believers. So verse 11 is where we stopped and the scripture there asks us, it says, what manner of person ought you to be? Ought I to be? Ought we to be? In holy conduct and godliness. 12, looking for and hastening to the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Verses 13 and 14. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. 14. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. Be diligent to be found by him. Who is the him there? That is Jesus Christ. Be diligent to be found in Christ. Be diligent. This is the hope of the believers that we will inherit that new heaven and new earth through him who is Jesus. Let me conclude this by just reading the portion of Revelation to us. Revelation chapter 21, verse 6. Let me take from verse 1, rather, from verse 1 all the way, but I will emphasize verse 6. It says, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3, and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, I wish you can join me to just shout that, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them, and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Five. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Seven, and the last verse that we want to read. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son, he shall be my daughter. Of course, you can see verse 8 there, talking about the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually uh, immoral. All those shall have their part in the second death. So, the hope of the believer in Christ Jesus is that we will inherit the new heaven and the new earth. And we will continue to live with God forever. Let me emphasize 
verse 6. Because you may not have picked that up. Look at the scripture there. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. If you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, when John the Beloved received the revelation from Jesus, there Jesus declared to him, he said, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Beloved, the end of all things is in Christ Jesus, through whom all things were created. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John chapter 1 from verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by him. Without him, there is nothing that was made that was made. Hallelujah. In him, through him, God created all things. If you go to the book of Colossians, the scripture again further emphasizes that. Specifically, in verses 16 and 17, he said all things were made by him and for him. In verse 17, the Bible says, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. He is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ is your end. Whether you believe it or not, whether you accept him or not, Jesus Christ is your end. And Jesus Christ is the end of the world. He will come again, and the end will come. So Jesus is the Alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. He is your beginning. He is your end. He is the end of the world. So when we're talking about the end, let us conclude with this understanding that actually there is one end. And that end, the end of all ends, is by Jesus Christ himself, the one who is the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end. So if you are in Christ, you shall inherit the new heaven and the new earth and enjoy forever this eternal life that God Almighty has given to us, all those who believe in him through Jesus Christ, his son. May that be your portion and my portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.